Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Present by Mark Nagzan, published by Roma Publications. Anya Jasper wrote, I try to imagine what it would be like to outlive the end of the world. I grew up among World War II survivors, people who were constantly suspecting the coming of a new catastrophe. They were vigilant, rational hoarders, but also animated by a collective optimism with all the dreams and comforts of the post-war era. In my experience, people who witness war tend to preserve things and ideas accumulating what they believe to be fragments of history. Those who wish to resist the oblivion of history, the annihilation of speech, do their best to store and collect. I firmly believe that this practice can be a reaction to the fact that dictatorship take away our speech, but first and foremost they take away our books and documents. I don't mean to suggest that collecting is a valuable activity per se, Sometimes, collections are promised upon a narrow and individualistic idea of society, but preserving and cataloging, even when the selection of books and objects is controversial, is a way to suspend judgment and evade moral dilemmas, thus leaving ample room for future viewers to interpret the catalog and collection in their own way. Of course, the act of selecting and cataloging is never unbiased, but in the case of a library, books remain there to be touched and interpreted. When the cataloger is no longer there and the collection continues to exist, what is left is a small fragment of human history, a partial record of how we communicate and pass on our physical existence. Without any doubt, books occupy spaces with their physicality and they constantly remind me of my responsibility toward our cultural history and make me think of possible ways to reflect on human behavior and reread the past. On a certain level, books made me realize that preserving history is a moral responsibility for both individuals and institutions. We rarely create a catalog for ourselves. We do it for others, providing access points and directions to help them navigate information safely so as not to leave them alone in the open sea. One of the locations of Laimun, an artist-in-residence program and curatorial project, is a house built in the 1970s in the town of Villa Cidro, a small village in the south of Sardinia, Italy. The building is home to the collection of books and magazines that my grandparents gathered together with the aspiration to build a private library. In this house, time seems to have crystallized in the 1970s. For a few moments, one might even fantasize that a secret formula for stopping time is hidden within these walls. The archive mirrors a specific moment in Italian middle-class history and exhibits the utopia of a society that can lift itself out of intellectual and financial poverty through education. The shelves are lined with a variety of books that peacefully coexist. From the school books belonging to all the family members who had the chance to study, to cooking and travel magazines from specialized encyclopedias of finance and medicine to a vast collection of comic books. Magazines stored on shelves and in boxes around the house, such as Epoca, Tempo, Paris Match and Jour de France, provide insights into the history of advertising. These shiny advertisements often display the photographic apparatus, film cameras and tools for recording and listening. With these tools, it was easier for a broader portion of the population to create new images, to envision and cast an ideal self. Laimon's responsibility has expanded with the political goal of preserving this collection not as a private privilege, but as cultural heritage, with the intention of reinventing it, creating possibilities for inclusion and circulation. 
By engaging with these materials, artists can analyze and try to dismantle patriarchal and materialist ideologies of the past. Zooming in on certain social and political trends we need to remember so as not to repeat. The cataloger could not think of everything, so not all the magazines in this archive are neat and organized. Some of them are piled up and chaotically spread out on a large table in the garage. It is there that the artist Mark Nagzam, during his visit to Laimun, encountered them for the first time. While browsing through magazines, jumping from one topic to another, from one year to the next, he found an extensive range of material to start working with. Nagsam, whose artistic production has been dedicated for years to drawings, carefully observed the magazines and newspapers, focusing on all their details, printed and unchanged after more than half a century. His attention to marks and traces on these physical objects made me reflect on the lack of contemporary practices of cataloging our culture and its transformations. If we continue to take care of digital preservation as we are doing now, it is likely that in the future we will have limited resources for rereading the past and benefit from unexpected discoveries. Although contemporary society has found viable digital alternatives for the transmission of information and made it faster to search for stories of the past, these paper and ink magazines allow the artist to discover without algorithms, as in the physical world. There is a higher chance to stumble upon unexpected and peripheral details. Through his research, Mark Naxam even marvels at the composition of the page, discovering that the grids of the advertisement sections have been hand-drawn. His interest in these specific sections of the magazines show how the news media and publishing industry convey words and images and construct our desires. He observes the role of photographic images as an enduring agent in the construction of our society, reflecting on the beginning of an era we are still experiencing today. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.